sort of the traditional 30-second spot um, has its role, though we could debate for how long. Um, but, you know, we know that some of these creators have this amazing, unique relationship with their fans. Hi, and welcome. I'm Andy North with Velocitize. Today we're joined by Anastasia Goodstein, Senior Vice President of the Digital Innovation Group at the Ad Council. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. So let's start things off by talking a little bit about your role in, at, at the Ad Council and uh, perhaps what you're doing at South By. Sure. So at the Ad Council, I oversee our digital team. We work on the digital experiences for our campaigns. So we have, you know, 40 campaigns on different social good issues, and a lot of them have, you know, whether it's a web experience, now a bot experience, we have Alexa skills for our campaigns. It's my team that works with our very generous pro bono creative agencies and what we call our low bono digital shops that create these experiences and really bring them to life. Let's talk about some of your recent campaigns uh, and how those may or may not impact marketers today. Sure. Um, you may have heard of Love is No Labels, which uh, is a big campaign that we've done about diversity and inclusion and getting people to sort of rethink their unconscious bias. Our creative agency partner on that is RGA, and it was really our first campaign to go viral. Um, it was one of the most viral social good cause campaigns on YouTube. And, you know, it's just reached people globally in a way that, you know, we couldn't have anticipated but are thrilled with. And, you know, we have a lot of corporate partners that are involved in the campaign, which isn't sort of our usual model. Usually we have a nonprofit or a government agency that's sort of the sponsor of the campaign. And for this campaign, we have brands that are sponsoring the campaign, and then we have sort of our nonprofit issue experts serving in that role. So it's it's been fantastic. Let's talk a little bit more about what some of your brands, some of the interaction that you're having with some of the brands and, and the organizations that uh, that you're working with lately. What are their hot topics right now? How are you helping them with that? You know, we have a bullying prevention campaign that we launched a couple of years ago, and brands were involved in that as well. Facebook was involved, Twitter was involved, Adobe was involved, and I think obviously um, for them, you know, the issue of online harassment is very important when they are building technology where, you know, they see a lot of that occur. And so I think it made sense for them to invest in a campaign to really um, get that message out, especially to younger teens and, you know, who, who live and breathe sort of social media. And so, you know, that's, that's one example. Um, you know, with Love Is No Labels, we have so many brands on that campaign, as probably you can see through the panels here. Diversity is a huge topic um, at every marketing event and at South By, and I think it just makes sense for brands to want to amplify that message, get it out there. Um, so, you know, we're really providing an opportunity for them to get involved in issues that, that they care about. Uh, you're an author. You have a book called uh, Totally Wired, What Teens and Tweens Are Doing Online. Talk a little bit about that. Sure. So this book was published back in 2007 when MySpace had sort of blown up as the first really big social networking platform that teens had flocked to. And, you know, I think there was a lot of moral panic and fear about what this new technology was um, from parents, from government, you know, there was sort of the the fears about predators. And, you know, like many of us who I've been coming to South by for many years, um, back then, you know, felt very positive and, and optimistic about the technology and the potential for it to, to do good, to be good, um, you know, all of the opportunities it was affording young people. We wanted to sort of balance that perspective, and I think my book was an attempt to do that. It wasn't glossing over the risks and the realities of what was happening even back then with bullying and sort of how these platforms can amplify you know, some of the behaviors that teens have always done, but it, it can be worse. Um, but it was also, you know, a way to say to parents, like, look, it's, 
it's going to be okay. Um, you know, teens need to be sort of uh, media literate, technology literate, like instead of um, wanting to sort of shut it down, let's figure out how to how to live with it because it's not going away. And to that extent, what how is the Ad Council getting involved? I mean, we we don't have a specific um, sort of digital literacy campaign right now, but you know we do have uh, a campaign around bullying where you know it's it addresses both online and offline, um, you know, and the idea was to sort of empower uh, young people to you know be upstanders and um, you know to to be aware of when it's happening and. Um, find ways to support their friends who may be experiencing that. Um, so that's one area where we've sort of addressed it. And I think in some ways, even our Love is No Labels campaign, we've done a lot of work taking that into the gaming space, um, where issues of diversity and inclusion um, in a lot of the gaming communities come up quite often. And so, you know, that's another example where we've had sort of panels of community managers for different gaming publishers talk about how they address those issues when they come up in their communities and sort of set the tone. Uh, you'd mentioned that you've been coming to South by uh, for many years. Yes, I'm and... an OG. <laughs> <laughs> Talk a little bit about what you saw then, uh, uh, some of your first South by Southwest yeah. experiences, and, and where you see it now and, and where you potentially see it going. Yeah, I mean, my first South by was, I think it was in 2004, and, you know, my work was really in youth culture. I had a, a blog um, called Why Pulse, and I did a panel where I had teen bloggers. Now these guys are adults <laughs> doing things. So that's that's how long ago it was. They might be here. They, they could be here. Um, but it was much smaller, obviously. It, everything fit in the convention center. It was more about um, design and code, I think, and sort of uh, for the people who were building, you know, these internet experiences and then the platforms, the focus was really there. I think the rock stars were sort of the academics. Um, Henry Jenkins and, and Dana Boyd um, were big names. They're still big names in their fields, but you know, people would um, overflow the ballrooms to sort of hear what they had to say about the technology. And then I think, you know, the marketers came <laughs> and it went from this to you know, ultimately what it is now, where it's sort of this sprawling, massive, um, you know, experiential marketing everywhere. Uh, people coming sometimes not even to hear the panels, just to have meetings because it's sort of where you know the agencies are, where the brands are. It's a place to sort of make those connections. Um, I mean, I think there's still a lot of great discussion about technology. Um, I think, you know, as I was saying earlier, it's interesting how I think, you know, we've seen so much change in such a short amount of time. And I think the optimism and the exuberance about the platforms and, you know, Twitter launched here has now shifted to sort of a little bit of concern about how they're being used and who's using them and um, you know we're we're starting to have those kinds of ethical discussions and you know I, I would love to see and hear more of that. Gen Z, uh, obviously the ones that are starting to graduate college right now, they are the first truly digital generation. Arguably millennials were sort of the pioneers but uh, Gen Z certainly has the nomenclature for being one of the first, the digital dependents, if you will. Mm -hmm. And it they're tending more towards the entertain me. They're the first generation that has truly come away from the inform me to the entertain me. How do you see the Ad Council and perhaps some of the members uh, reacting to that, getting ahead of that, if you will, mm -hmm. still with the responsibility to drive their campaigns, but yeah. in a more entertaining fashion? Yeah, it's interesting. Um, we launched a couple of years ago a program called Creators for Good. And we were probably one of the first nonprofits to, you know, make a big commitment to the YouTube space and to working with creators that are very, very popular with Gen Z. And, you know, for our campaigns that were reaching a younger audience, it just made sense, right? Sort of the traditional 30-second spot um, 
has its role, though we could debate for how long. Um, but you know, we know that some of these creators have this amazing, unique relationship with their fans, um, where their fans engage so much more deeply with their content in the comments section. That it just, you know, made sense for us to take some of our campaigns, match them with creators who are passionate about the issue. Um, and then have them in their own authentic way sort of, you know, talk about the issue. So it's not at all in a traditional advertising format. It's really, you know, in their authentic voice native to their platform and for their audience. And we've seen fantastic results. Our first campaign that we launched with Creators for Good a couple years ago was about teen dating violence. And we had Megan Ranks, who is a popular YouTube creator, um, you know, make a video sort of showing, you know, what's okay to do with your boyfriend and what's like crossing that line. Mm -hmm. And it, it was a great learning experience for us. Um, it had way more views than a traditional PSA that we might put on YouTube would get. And again, the engagement um, in the comments was phenomenal. My guest today has been Anastasia Goodstein, Senior Vice President of the Digital Innovation Group at the Ad Council. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Really enjoyed it. Me too.